Beverly Hills. And here come the Beverly Hillbillies. Hey, do you got a telephone? 
A what? A telephone? Well, maybe one of your neighbors has one. It's a, uh, well, down in this country, it's probably a box attached to the wall. And uh, uh, you talk into it, and they can hear you in Tulsa. <laughs> maybe you'd better sit down for a spell. <laughs> oh, I have a tie. Listen, where's the nearest airfield? Airfield? You know, Granny, that's uh, one of them airfields sets up in the air. <laughs> Don't you sell that swamp till you hear from me. I'm flying to Tulsa. Now he thinks he's got wings. Shame, clamp it, you got slicker than your shame to admit it. That's just what I told you. 
Granny, how much they gonna pay him? All right, I'll tell you. He said it runs somewhere between twenty-five and a hundred. Twenty-five and a hundred? I know it don't sound like much, but Mr. Brewster seemed to set great store by the fact he's gonna pay me in some new kind of dollar. There ain't no new kind of dollar. Well, it's new to me. I've heard of gold dollars, silver dollars, paper dollars, but he says he's gonna pay me in, uh, what do you call them, Granny? Million dollars. <laughs>
I'm going to have to study on this. When that Brewster fella comes back, I'll ask him what he thinks. Well, your cousin is right about that, Mr. Clampett. Beverly Hills is a choice residential area, and lots of millionaires do settle there. Folks like me, huh? <laughs> well, uh, millionaires. <laughs> and movie stars, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is Tom Mix there? No. I'm afraid Mr. Mix is dead. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. What's the matter with you? Remember, Pearl, he got shot at the end of that picture. <laughs>
five million dollars to the account of J.D. Clavitt. J.D. As in Rockefeller. <laughs> Elevates us to third position in capital assets and assures our bank of... Come in. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Drysdale. All right, Taylor. Well, are we all set to give the Clappets a red carpet reception? Well, I'm afraid Mrs. Drysdale still isn't too happy, sir. Yes, I know. Oh, my wife is very upset that I got the estate next to ours for the Clappets. Says I don't even know what kind of people they are. Do you? <laughs> I know to the dollar what kind of people they are. They're my kind of people. Loaded. <laughs> Gardner's got the grounds in order? Uh, yes, sir. But I'm afraid that's another thing your wife is upset about. Oh? Well, you see, your gardeners have been working on their lawn all week. Why, they've mowed it, trimmed it, fed it, clipped it. I don't care if they lather it and shave it. <laughs> this is the most beautiful mansion in Beverly Hills. I want every square inch of ground within those walls in apple pie. Yes? Oh, hello, Margaret. No, dear, I'm very bit. Oh, good heavens, did you call the police? I'll be right there. What happened? The Clavitt estate is being invaded by a band of outlaws. Invaded? Yes, they're holding the gardeners at gunpoint. <laughs> Mason, too. Hey, Jed! 
This here is dandy soil. Fine, Granny. We'll commence plowing tomorrow. But this is Beverly Hill. Dirt is dirt. <laughs> yes, I know, but... Why don't we look around inside, eh? Well, here we are. I hope you're going to like this place I picked out for you. Maybe a trifle larger than what you're used to. But I feel a man with $25 million in my bank should live in a manner that... Come in, come in, this is your home.
Well, now, why don't you bring your missus over tonight for supper, and I'll have Granny womp up a mess of grits and hog jowl. <laughs> well, you see, right now my wife is in Boston. Well, that's too bad. When should she be back? Not too soon, fortune. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Drysdale. Long. Uncle Jed, you reckon one of these days I can have me a little bitty old taste of Granny's moonshine? Now, Jethro, you know the family rule about Granny's moonshine? You get your first taste on your wedding day and not before. Well, Uncle Jed, that might be an awful long time. I ain't even got me no sweetheart. How come? What? Back home. Every time I get me a girl, one of them there big fellas to take her right away from me. <laughs> Maybe out here in Beverly Hills. Oh, could I please have the act? I gotta split some wood for Granny. Bet you, Jethro. Ain't this place got a wood pile? Not that I could find. But I found a whole row of black old dead tree trunks. Pretty near as high as this high. Have you got a big for you to tackle? Well, shucks, no, Pa. They're only this big around. And all trimmed and top and strung together with the black rope. So as no matter which one you cut, the others keep it from falling. Somebody had a right smart idea. Just the same, I think I'd rather have Jethro do the cutting. Oh, Paul, let me. Oh, cutting trees and chopping logs ain't no work for a girl. I'm just as strong as Jethro. You ain't neither. I am so. You ain't neither. I am so too. You want a rascal. Darn too. <laughs> now here, here. That ain't no fair fight. Somebody gonna get hurt. Now, yeah, you see? You're getting too rough. Get thrown. Person can't get crippled from a hole like that. Get up from there. I can't, Uncle Jeff. You turn him loose and get up from there before I take the strap to the boot. Now, here, you get out there and chop down one of them tree trunks. Saw Granny some nice logs. Yes, sir, Uncle Jeff. I could have whooped you if you hadn't tripped me. Okay? Come back here and sit down. I want to talk to you. Mr. Byron Squire, and I'll do it again. Uh, That's what I want to talk to you about. Ellie Mae? You're getting too big to wrestle with boys. I'm as big as Jethro. <laughs> big that way, I mean, uh, growed up. You're a young lady now. You gotta start minding your manners. Fixing yourself up real nice and wearing dresses. Paul, folks would call me a sissy. Ain't sissy for girls to act like girls. You see, Ellie, I raised you like a boy, and I was wrong to do it. I reckon every man liked to have a son, and you was my only young And when your ma passed away, I just decided to turn you into a boy. By the time Granny come to help out, you was too wild to tame. I thundered you could outrun. Climb out, fight, and out shoot every boy in them hills. Be okay, Uncle. <laughs> but, but you me. It ain't right for folks to go against nature. I'll look at old Duke here. Reckon we could turn him into a cat. Of course not. That's right. Because nature made him into a dog. It's the same way nature made you into a girl. And lately she's getting more and more positive about it. You mean my years just grow? <laughs> no, nothing like that. You're pretty. Oh, Paul. I know you don't like it when I say that, but you like it when the young fellas around here come in saying it, and they will. Only they'll probably be using words, fancy words I won't even understand. But Ellie Mae, ain't nobody can ever tell you how pretty you really are, Sidney. Living picture of your mom. You still here? I thought you were going up to the Clamont estate. I didn't think it prudent for us both to be absent simultaneously. In the event of crises... The I... only crises you have to worry about right now is giving Mr. J.D. Clampett happy. Now, get up there. Tell me, how did you like the flamingos? <laughs> what flamingos? 
I thought pink flamingos around the swimming pool would add a rather elegant touch. <laughs> Mr. Clampett is not a man educated to elegance. That will take time. Right now, there are more pressing problems. Of course, getting settled, the servant problem. Well, whatever they are, just get up there and solve them. Now, J.D. Clampett is this bank's largest depositor, and I'm making his satisfaction your responsibility. I accept the mantle of responsibility with which you have cloaked my shoulders. And I shall so conduct myself that if this great financial institution shall last a thousand years, people will still say, this was their finest hour. <laughs> and he would, all right. Got a lot of pitch and tar in it. Ought to burn real good. Yeah. <laughs> that flimsy great holds up. Granny. Granny. This is top that tree trunk. Want I should split it up too? No, just leave it outside. Yes, sir. This place ain't even got a wood box. Yeah, folks don't need much wood out here. Remember what Pearl said? It don't get cold. Yeah, I remember. It might not get cold in the day, but it sure freezes solid at night. How you know? I show you how I know. Every bit of food in this here storage bin is frozen harder than a rock. <laughs> stuff in it. <laughs> Get through. Go on out there and catch us a chicken. Okay, I put that. How you know we got chicken? At least this size is bad to have chickens. <laughs> Ain't all froze. <laughs> about things growing bigger out here. That thing was this high. Ah, get through. Honest, he's got legs this long. If he's on the drumstick. The drumstick ain't much. Whoever gets that neck is eating from now on. Commence is here and run. Come up to here. You ain't forgot what I said about Granny's jug of liquor. I ain't been to Granny's jug. You have your in first. Honest, cross my heart. Where'd you see this chicken? Down by the cement pond. <laughs> cement pond? Uncle Jed, that pond is the fanciest thing you ever did see. Why, thing is steps. So the cattle can walk right down into it and get a drink. <laughs> and up at one end, there's a lady step. They're made out of rock. And she's a pouring water out of a jar right into that cement pond. <laughs> oh. Well, that's how come that big old pink chicken to get away from me. Flew right over the top of that there rock lady, landed in that pond, and swam like an otter. Just a flapping them big old pink wings and hollered. What color did you see that chicken wore? It's pink. <laughs> Ain't I told you that stuff was stunk your gross? Miss <laughs> Granny, I didn't. I didn't touch a drop. You and me is going to the woodshed. Jethro, nah, well, you swear to be telling the truth. So help me, Jefferson Davis. You talk more at all when you speak to the president. Well, he ain't president no more. I'll have no Yankee talk in my kitchen. Now, Jethro, you and me is going back out there and corner that chicken. Granny, get your fire to go. Billy B, used to be 
Keep up out front and keep your eyes open for that Miss Hathaway. Count on her to take you in hand, get you in the right kind of clothes. Come on. I shall. We have a complete servant's wardrobe from chef to chauffeur. Come with me. <laughs> what in the name of Thomas Chippendale is this? Has <laughs> Mr. Clapper seen that this disgraceful and unsightly mound of debris? Oh, yes, ma'am. This is all here. <laughs> oh, what, a, what charming antiques. <laughs> Just like he said, you do. Rock lady pouring water into a cement pond. Yes, sir. And over there's where I seen that great big pink chicken. Only thing is, it don't sound like a chicken. It makes a kind of holler noise. <laughs> Eating. 
Yes, I, I know. But what was it? Cricket? No, no. It was crawdad. <laughs> I don't think even Jethro would eat crickets. I was referring to the game. Yes. Gillian, where's the axe? I bet you, Granny. You talked to Miss Hathaway. And just why does Cook need an axe? I've hit this with everything I could lay a hand to. I even whopped it with an iron skip. <laughs> you are supposed to hit it with a croquet mallet. All right, where is it? I don't think I'll tell you. <laughs> there is a time for work and a time for play. <laughs> now then, what are we cooking for Mr. Clavin? Well, I don't know what you're cooking him, but if he wants any vittles from me, somebody better shoot a possum. <laughs> Possum? You got a better idea? But of course, a nice big fluffy souffle. All right. You shoot it and you skin it. <laughs> you don't even know what a souffle is. What kind of a cook are you? I'm a cook with a stove that don't draw, food that's froze solid, chickens that can't be caught, eggs that can't be broke, and a smart alecky sissy woman telling me my business. That's what kind of a cook I am. Mind your tongue, little woman. I can have your job. You sure can, and the sooner the better. Jethro's <laughs> coming, and just wait till you see what he's got. Thank heaven. No, I can have an intelligent conversation. <laughs> Look, Granny, I got that big chicken. I hope it ain't as tough as it's egg. That is a flamingo. Ah. Oh, no, ma'am, that's my nephew, Jethro. Jethro, <laughs> say hello to Miss Hathaway. I didn't mind him. <laughs> this is the big, dangerous chicken you ever did say. You went to school at Oxford? Yes, ma'am. I'm in the fifth grade. Stop dragging and bring that chicken snake. Billy Bay! No, stop, you boy. Don't harm one feather of that beautiful bird. I've taken just about as much as I'm going to take from you. Yeah, Granny. Billy, you get the fire going under the big kettle outdoors. Young lady, where is your maid's uniform? I ain't going to work. Oh, yes, you are. No, I ain't. Oh, yes, you are if I must subdue you forcefully. I wouldn't try hey, that. Hey, don't be that. Don't. about this priceless crystal chandelier. It was designed and made for Louis XV 
hung in the hall of mirrors at Versailles. Napoleon Bonaparte planned campaigns for the light of that chandelier. Talleyrand used it. Wellington, Israeli, Bismarck, Wilson. Mr. Drysdale, we're just plain folk. We don't mind a few things being secondhand. <laughs> Getting back to my cousin Pearl, she's looking after the old home place for me. You ain't never seen my family home, have you? No, I haven't, Mr. Clapp. It's a dandy. Yes, those southern mansions are beautiful. I suppose it has the large white pillars. It did, but we bring them along and put them on the beds out here. <laughs> no, you see, I was referring to wooden pillars. Oh, I ain't never slept on one of them. We had everything first class back home. <laughs> sure hope Pearl's taking good care of that place. <laughs> Five million to be exact. <laughs> you ain't here to back out, are you? <laughs> no, no, indeed. Your your cousin's money is safe in the bank in California. <sighs> I just thought you'd like to know that I heard from the bank, and your family arrived in Beverly Hills safe and sound. Oh, that is good news. My son Jethro drove my chin out. <laughs> yes, I know he did. <laughs> oh, I have something here from the bank. I, I think you'll uh, I think you'll enjoy it. For me. They told me at your house I'd find you here. Yeah, well, I promised Cousin Jed I'd keep an eye on the old home place for him. <laughs> it's a long trip from my house, but uh, I, I, I'm glad to do it for Jed. That's nice of you. Yeah, well, you know, uh, c c c can I help you look for that money? Well, that money is uh, <laughs> pictures of the estate that Mr. Drysdale, the president of the bank, purchased for him in Beverly Hills. Oh. Now, this is now the Jed Clampett estate. Land to mercy, look at that. Why, it's bigger in the state capital. <laughs> Quite a change from this place, all right. What in the world is that? Oh, uh, that swimming pool. Swimming pool? Yeah, it's quite ornate. Oh, my son Jethro's gonna like that. Can I go swimming here in the cement pond? Of course not. I don't allow nobody to splash around in my wash water. <laughs> Ain't there no place else you can wash? This cement pond's the only water we got. This place ain't got a well, it ain't got a creek. It ain't even got a rain barrel to catch what comes out of the sky. Well, when that banker fella seen me unloading your wash tub and scrubbing board, he said, why, you can throw that away. We don't use them things here in Beverly Hills. Now, you listen here to me, boy. I don't care how other folks live in Beverly Hills. But us clampets is gonna be clean. Yes, ma'am. May not have it as nice as we have it back home in the cabin. Look <laughs> right in the house and everything. But we ain't gonna lower our standards. No, ma'am. Here, wrench these things out for me. We gotta get this tub back to the kitchen really fast. Yep. Being clean is a strict rule with your Uncle Jim. Let me look you over. <laughs> Many the time we've been down to our last piece of fat. I'd say, shall I cook it to eat it, or shall I render it down for soap? <laughs> He'd say, no, render it down for soap, Granny. The Lord will feed us, poor folk, but we got to do our own washing. <laughs> but Uncle Jed ain't poor now, Granny. He got $25 million. How long do you think that's going to last if we go throw it away on store-bought soap? Waste not, want not. <laughs> now, here's a, here's a view of the entrance hall. My stars and garden. Why, the palace. <laughs> Who ever would have thought that my cousin Jed would be living in an estate like this? Well, the credit is yours. You're the one who talked him into moving. Oh, well, I put the notion in his head. But was really kind of Allie Mae, when? Yes, his daughter will have a wonderful life as a Beverly Hills debutante. Can't you just see that beautiful girl descending this magnificent stairway? I sure can. Oh, Ellie Mae, 
I don't reckon that's the way a young lady comes down and sits in Beverly Hills. Is it, Mr. Drysdale? Oh, well, not as a rule, no. No, I didn't come down more the way. Watch this. Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. Show? No, my secretary will show you. Oh, she's in town doing some shopping for you. Oh, what's she getting me? Well, now, that's going to be a surprise, Ellie, but it's some things you've been needing, and they're going to be pretty, and you're going to like them. Things I've been needing? A set of muskrat traps. <laughs> a three-blade frog sticker? Nope. <laughs> A ready-made slingshot. Now, and you way off the track. Now, you wait till Miss Hathaway gets here and you see. Yes. Well, I'll be pushing along to the bank. Now, don't you worry about your daughter, Mr. Clampett. When my secretary gets through with her, you'll think she's been to finishing school. I sure wish my cousin Pearl was out here fixing Ellie up. She's a wizard, fancy sewing. Oh, is she a dressmaker? That woman can make anything. Why, she can pick up a handful of straw, and before you know it, she's made a hat. That's remarkable. So she's a milliner. Oh, she's a clamper. <laughs> Married to Bo Dean. I uh, don't recall knowing the milliners. <laughs> milliners are women who make hats. Now, that's Pearl, all right, but she's a clamper. <laughs> you talk about making hats. Pearl made herself a hat one time with a shape just like a bird's nest. And in there on the nest uh, was this blue jay a setting on her eggs. Well, sir, they come from everywhere to see that hat, to study it, to see how Pearl made it so they could copy it. Boy, there was dozens of them from all around. Hat designers? No, blue jay. <laughs> Never did catch on too good with people. <laughs> For a while there. Pearl couldn't hardly go out of the house without a bunch of blue jays taken out after her. <laughs> sure wish she was out here. She'd have Ellie slick as a picture in a catalog. Yep. I ought to be out there in Beverly Hills helping Cousin Jan. Well, he certainly has plenty of room for you. This mansion of his has 32 rooms and 14 baths. <laughs> 14 bathrooms? Yes. A sunken marble bathtub. Oh, I can just see Ellie May having herself a bubble bath in there. <laughs> I tell you, Mr. Brewster, the more I see of these pictures, the more I want to get out there and help Cousin Jed. Of course, I wouldn't go without being asked. Well, naturally. But, uh... You know, I, I think you should go. I've been asked. Well, now, it's not exactly my province. I, I mean, I, uh... Well, why don't you telephone your cousin and talk to him? Oh, why, they ain't a telephone within 40 miles of this place. Nearest one, I guess, is uh, at the International Emporium, clean over to Oxford. Well, I'll be happy to drive you over there. Oh, I couldn't let you drive me all that way just to use telephone. Busy oil company man like you. That's 40 miles. There's no trip at all in this car. No, I couldn't do it. Why, folks that see me riding in this big, shiny car with a tall, good-looking city fella, why, sure as the world, they'd think that... Let's go. Well, uh, what about your horse and buggy? Oh, just untie, Bessie. You go on home. <laughs> Well, uh, Bessie's headed for home, all right. Uh, Mrs. Bodine, how long has your buggy been hitched there? About an hour. Why? Why, a uh, blue jay built her nest on the seat, and she was sitting on her eggs. Oh, shoot. I wanted to wear that. <laughs> Gentlemen, aided and abetted by the gossamer garments, exotic lotions, and 
other feminine appurtenances within these cartons, I am ready to assume the role of Pygmalion and transform that barefoot Galatea into a striking and sophisticated paragon of Beverly Hills. The couture. That's yes, the hard way. <laughs> well, duty calls. I leave you in capable hands. Goodbye, Mr. Kravitz. Thank you, sir. Chief. <laughs> Well, that sure is neighborly of you, Miss Hathaway. You reckon you can handle it, me? Uncle Jay, it's Granny says. Oh, howdy, Miss Hathaway. No, oh, bonjour, Jeffo. Carry them things in for Miss Hathaway, Jethro. I think she kind of likes you, boy. She does? Well, I can't take them into the house. That's what I come out here to tell you. Granny says that all the men folks got to stay out of the house while Ella May's taking her bath. Oh. But isn't Ellie Mae bathing in the privacy of her own bedroom suite? Hear what she call you? Sweet. <laughs> What's the matter with him? Why doesn't he answer? Hey, he's just a little shy, I reckon. Ask him again. Is Ellie Mae in her bedroom suite? No, she ain't, darling. <laughs> well, I'll find her myself. <laughs> Jed, I got me a girl. You sure have, boy, and a city girl, too. Yeah! <laughs> oh, some city girls I were about, just so such a good-looking boy. Every girl in the fifth grade was after him. I hardly think anything serious can develop between boys and girls in the fifth grade. Oh, I don't know. So far this year, there's been three couples out of Jethro's class get married. Married? Fifth grader. Parsons nearly as busy in that school as the teacher. Amazing. Oh, I've heard of it. Uh-oh, wouldn't you know it? There's that snoopy Alberta Bradshaw and her big mouth door sitting on my front porch. Oh, I can just hear the stories. They'll start going on if they see me in this car here with you. <laughs> she tried to talk Granny out of going to California. <laughs> she ought to see Granny now. Living like a queen in that Beverly Hills mansion. Somebody else. <laughs> Ain't that right, Ellie? Yeah. 
Pa said he heard tell that folks sometimes live one family right on top of another. But that's only in apartment houses. This entire house belongs to you. And each one has his own individual bedroom suite. Come along and let me show you. And also the lovely things I brought from town. Yeah, well, you go ahead. I'll be up directly. What all did you bring from town? Everything, Ellie. Everything from chapeau to pumps. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I won't have to tote water. Get through? Yeah, Uncle Jack. Now, you're going to be keeping company with a girl. Is there any questions you'd like to ask me? What kind of questions? No, about girls. How much you know about girls? They softer than boys. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Speaking. And they shorter and rounder. Yeah. And the hair's longer and it smells sweet when you snuggles up to them. Ooh, so you've been doing some snuggling, have you? I've done more than that. Yeah, I reckon you better tell me about it. Who was she? Prettiest girl in the hills. Big Mouth Bradshaw. <laughs> An old Vernus girl. <laughs> I hear tell she's kind of fast. Is she ever? Uncle Jed, I was walking past the cabin, and Big Mouth, she calls out the window to me. She says, Howdy, Jethro. She says, My ma's just made a big batch of cookies. Come on in and have some. And I says, Sure your ma won't mind? She says, Ma's gone, and so's Pa. I'm here all alone. Well, Uncle Jed, I was in that house before you could wink an eye. You can see as I blame you. <laughs> No sooner was I inside, the big mouth, she puts a music record on the phonograph machine and commences to sashaying around, a twisting and a turning. Dancing. Yeah, I reckon so. Anyway, she says, put your arms around me, Jethro, and I'll teach you the two-step. What you say? I says, listen, big mouth, I says, here we are all alone. Your ma and your pa gone. And you think that I'm going to waste my time dancing? I say, it's not me, sister. Bring on them cookies. <laughs> what she said? Well. Jed, you and Jethro can start digging the well. That city woman brought us some punks. That's fine, Granny. We'll get right to it. What did that Bradshaw girl say when you said bring on them cookies? Well, she just held up them cookies like this here. Kind of blinked her eyes at me and said, Jethro, which do you think it tastes sweeter? These here cookies or my lips? <laughs> well, Uncle Jed, right then and there is when I found out she was fast. <laughs> I grabbed them two cookies and it took me two miles to outrun that gal. <laughs> Some one of these days, you and me's got to have a long talk. <laughs> oh, yes. He's a lady killer, that bar of mine. While Verna Bradshaw's daughter traced him all the way home one day. Sounds like Jethro has a lot of charm and sex appeal. Oh, he has. It's uh, funny how a daughter can take after her father and a, a boy can favor his mother. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I ought to be out there looking after Jethro. You know, Jed's going to need him to help garden a place this big. Well, most Beverly Hills mansions have regular gardeners. And, of course, a complete sprinkling system. Sprinkling system? Oh, yes, indeed. That entire lawn is crisscrossed with underground pipes. Bound to mercy. <laughs> By thunder, Jethro, there's water all over this property. Ain't too deep, neither. I know. Should I commence to digging? Well, now, let's get as close to the house as we can. That way the pump won't have some fur to pull. Robert? Jethro? 
Oh, oh, here comes your sweetheart. Mr. Clapper, I cannot handle that daughter of yours. What happened? I opened that box of beautiful clothes, turned my back for a moment, and she bolted like a wild colt. I was afraid this would happen. Where is she? She's up there. I'll go right up and talk to her. Jethro, have, have you been upstairs yet? No, ma'am. Then you've got a surprise coming to you. What is it? Your sweets. <laughs> so are you. No. <laughs> I'm ashamed of you. Running off from Miss Hathaway. I didn't run away from Miss Hathaway. What'd you climb up here for? To cut a fork for that new store-bought slingshot she brought. Did she bring you a slingshot? Fanciest thing you ever did see. Just a minute, I'll hook it up and you can see for yourself. Look at that. <laughs> A store-bought, lace-trimmed, double-barrel slingshot. Ooh, that's doozy. I don't know how good I can aim it, but it'll sure throw a heap of rocks. <laughs> yeah, they really need me out there. Well, I could work wonders for Ellie Mae with my fancy sewing and beauty secrets and hair styling and everything. Of course, I had to learn all those things, not having a husband to support me. Didn't you say it was 40 miles to the town of Oxford? Oh, that's right. Well, we've already driven 110 miles. Well, Lord to mercy, I forgot to tell you the turn off. <laughs> well, as long as we come this far, uh, maybe we ought to go right on to California. <laughs> Tell you, Granny, there's so much water here, you could shoot a load of buckshot in that ground and bring up a dozen springs. I'll be right back. Looking to get cured. Damn, the city cure is no good. 
The minute you go to take that away from them, they want it all the more. I could cure Mrs. Drysdale of her drinking in two days. Oh, Granny? I just tell her she could have all she wanted. When they find out you don't care if they drink, they don't care to drink. That sure would be a blessing. Uh, over here, Ellie, now. No more talk about drinking. Hey, look, everybody. Ella May's wearing a dress. How oh, Miss Drysdale's in the house to see you. All right. Bye, my cheap birdie. Yeah. But, Ellie, you're showing too much bare hot. <laughs> well, that ain't her fault, Granny. She just got the dress on backwards. Ellie, honey, put it on the other way around. All right. Hold it. Hold on. <laughs> Well, Miss Hathaway says it's a California sun dress. Let no son of mine wear it. My daughter neither. Granny, you'd just get her to something decent whilst I talk to Mr. Drysdale. Uncle Jay, can I go swimming in the cement pond? Oh, I reckon so, Jethro. But this ain't like the swimming hole back home. You can't go in there without no clothes on. I can't? No, sir. Okay, Uncle Jay. Mom. 
not peddling troubles to a man bowed down with the misery he's got. <laughs> you know his wife. Mr. Drysdale, our hearts go out to you. And we're going to help you, ain't we, Jim? You bet you we are. And there's a poor purpose in this world if he can't help his neighbor. Oh, you're very kind, but I'll manage. I've been living with it for years. Have a nip, it'll brace you up. Oh, no, thank you. I, I never touch it. You hear that, Jed? Poor man. He's got all the trouble and none of the fun. <laughs> Here goes a soft-hearted woman. Yeah. Now, about her complaints. Oh, yeah. Well, for one thing, that electric meat grinder has been giving Granny a heap of trouble. Electric meat grinder? Yeah, this is right here in the dish drawer. Oh, it grinds the meat all right, but then you can't find it. It goes down that pipe. Maybe <laughs> lost two squirrels and a rabbit in that thing. <laughs> That's a disposal. You only put things in there that you don't want. Now, Mr. Drysdale, that ain't altogether true. Granny sure wanted them squirrels and that rabbit. <laughs> Another thing, this here sideways pump don't work at all. We must have carried in a barrel of water to prime that thing, but it doesn't work at all. Every once in a while, this little thing in the jig here makes a ringing noise like that. There it goes again. Well, that's the telephone. Someone's calling you. I don't hear them. <laughs> They're calling you on the telephone. Say hello into it. Hello. <laughs> have to lift the receiver first. Now say it. Hello. That's how I am. 
I'm afraid, Milburn, that you've let the wrong kind of people move in next door to us, and I'm dreadfully, dreadfully upset. Now, dear, you mustn't let yourself get into this condition. <laughs> Control yourself. No, no, dear, you mustn't come home yet. No, not until we get them in shape. I mean, get you in shape. Well, you know, I will wait until you're cute. Milburn, I want to meet the Clampets as soon as possible. Now, when will that be? What about Christmas? <laughs> Next year. Milburn, this conversation is making less and less sense. Now, I want the truth about the Clampets, or I'm flying home immediately. Now, Margaret, please control yourself. I don't want you flying. <laughs> No, please, dear, please, stay on the ground. <laughs> dear, why don't you lie down and take a sip? And I'll call you from the office. Goodbye. I'm sorry, my wife. We understand. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll see you later. Keep your chin up. Poor <laughs> me. He don't even want us to meet her. But he says she won't be cured till Christmas of next year. I still say I could cure Mrs. Drysdale in two days. Sure be worth a try. We could get her out here. Kid, misery loves company. And that poor miserable woman thought that she had a drinking friend living next door. <laughs>
No, I think the club is White and Joy, Palm Springs. <laughs> Palm Springs? Where's that? About 125 miles from here. In the desert. Desert? Yeah, remember we crossed on them on the way out here. All that sand? Yeah, I remember. You ain't getting me to no desert. Trees were so far apart, the woodpeckers had to tote lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but this is different, Granny. This is a beautiful resort with lots of trees and fine hotels and swimming pools. We got a pond for swimming right there. Uh, Ellie's out swimming right now. You didn't jump in with her clothes on, did you? I don't know. Oh, surely not. She promised to wear the lovely swim ensemble I got her. Yeah, she done just like Jethro. Here she comes with the dress shrunk clear up to her. <laughs> Granny! What's the matter? All her hair come out. What? It's true. Ellie lost her beautiful hair. <laughs> Help her, she's bald as an eagle. <laughs> Take off your bathing cap. Oh, you're happy. 
stop at home first and freshen up, take some medicine or something. Milton, I have just flown 3,000 miles to meet the classics, and I intend to meet them right now. Well, Donnie, they're, they're probably out of town, you see. They, they travel extensively. Oh, they're wonderful people. It'd be a shame if you missed them. But I know how anxious you are to get back to Boston and your doctors. And Sonny. How is Sonny? How's he like part of this year? Yale? Princeton? Dartmouth? Let's go ask him. But what is the matter with you? Melbourne, let's go. Let go, you hear me? Let go, I say. Let go. Have you gone mad? Let go, you beast. Step aside, lady. I'll shoot it. What'd you shoot, Jethro? Like it was a box.